laying away. Natalie is faced with temptation. Comedy round of the crouches at 10.35. Right now, BBC One's playing this game. A magnificent setting. Two great teams. What drama here. is an international standard polo player, model and talented amateur golfer who's a big fan of Colin Montgomery. And he likes her too, as whenever they sit next to each other at charity dinners, he gets her chips. It's <laughs> Jodie Kidd. <laughs> Will Tilly Jonathan this week is a TV and sports presenter who said if she had to compare herself to a footballer, it would be Roy Keane because she's passionate, fiery and ambitious. And she once waited three years to break Alf Inge Harland's leg. <laughs> we pick up the show with a handbags question. David, Rory and Jody, take a look at this. Here's one-time England skipper and fading Wolves hard man, the self-styled governor, Paul Ince. And here's former Liverpool defender and would-be chuckle brother, Mark Lawrence. <laughs> But David's team, what has Loro done that so upset the Wolves' captain? Right, well, Loro was famous for having a moustache and then one day it suddenly disappeared. Oh, mm -hmm. we all know where that went then. It's <laughs> 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 all right, it's still there. I think they're very similar, they're both sort of gay moustaches, aren't they? <laughs> You'd like to know, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic what? to have two such fantastically beautiful women on the show. I mean, oh. stunning. Oh. Absolutely. I mean, you're both, you're very different looking. My but, head is but both, both. <laughs> You know, it's very irresponsible of you, Nick, to have such beautiful women on the show when we all know the precarious situation that Phil's in right now. <laughs> It'd be like knowing you're on a diet and taking you for a tour of a pie factory. <laughs> <laughs> You're our first polo player, I think. We had polo players. I don't ones? think so. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's oh, an upper class game. It's really upper class game, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, you think it is? Did you take it up to get out of the ghetto? Or no, I didn't <laughs> take it up to get out of the ghetto. <laughs> but it is. It's, up, it's one of those upper class pastimes like uh, beagling and incest, isn't it? Oh God! <laughs> no, but all the men, all the men have sort of very posh names like Hugo and Sinjin, don't they? No, they don't. What's, you, your boyfriend? No, your boyfriend all... plays. Yeah, he plays. What's he called? Tiggs. <laughs> Does he like bouncing? <laughs> but what's his real name? Tarquin. His real name is Tarquin. Oh. Tarquin? Nice name, Tarquin, yeah. Yeah, but I bet he hasn't lost touch with the streets. I bet to his friends he's still Tarquin from the block. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have a fantasy, fantasy polo team, like a fantasy football team? No. No, they don't. It's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. Jodie's been your fantasy polo team, hasn't she? <laughs> Very easily. <laughs> David will be in my fantasy polo team as a horse. Look at him, he's half man, half horse, like a centaur. I was thinking about your, your ponies, this only just occurred to me, but it's children in need soon. I was thinking, you know, have yeah. to cut off a charity. Yeah, keep what do you think, it. everybody? Mm. Yeah. yeah! What a lovely gesture from David! You've gone no, John. Oh. <laughs> Never mind, no, let the children die, eh, David? <laughs> So, uh, Wolves and Mark Lawrenson there. Sorry, slightly uh, sidetracked. You're, you're, what did you play with him, haven't you? He's a good player. But he has some <laughs> irritating habits, doesn't he? Um, he it never puts his shirt on until he's on the pitch, does he? Yeah, that's right, you know. That's he just likes to show his muscles and, you know, the muscles he hasn't got. And he doesn't like, like penalties. He won't watch penalties. He shits himself in at penalties. Well, a bit like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad at that. <laughs> no, yeah, hey, to be what's fair. about you with penalties, by the way? Well, not watching penalties. Yeah. No, I don't watch penalties. Why? Never. I don't like them. They're, they're not well, proper you, football. You go out the room? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I left Wembley in Euro 96 semi-final. I left come back at Etienne before the no. penalties. Yeah. Is there any chance you just stay in? We might get through them. Yeah, you might. <laughs> It's a punditry thing, is it? Because Loro yeah, is a pundit yeah, yeah. for the BBC, and he's obviously said something about Wolves or Incy, mm -hmm. which the governor has taken the wrong way. Yeah. The correct answer for three points. Right? <laughs> well done. 
Yep. It all goes back to a comment that Mark Lawrence made last week on Radio 5 Live. In a preview of the game between Bolton and Wolves, he cracked his favourite joke, what time do Wolves kick off? Every ten minutes. <laughs> Paul Ince wasn't taking it lying down. Wolves forced a one-all draw, and at the press conference after the game, he said, Mark Lawrenson is a prick, and you can put that in your paper. <laughs> Wolves, of course, beat Man City on Saturday. It was the first goal Wolves had scored at home in the top flight since 1984. Even as the ball sailed past him, David was still hoping that the cobwebs would keep it out. <laughs> <laughs> Wolves are currently up for sale for a pound. Roman Abramovich offered to buy them, but only because he wanted four pounds change to buy Leeds. <laughs> Phil, Jonathan and Kirsty, it's a golfing excuse for you. Here's big South African Ernie Els winning the Open in 2002. And here he is making a dismal defence of his title at Sandwich this summer. But as you might expect, he had a good reason for failing. So what was his excuse, Phil's team? What was it like growing up in a golfing family? Because you must have known all the top golfers, I guess. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, fine. I mean, she's known Nick yeah. Faldo for ages. She's known him for like at least five or six wives, <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> I always get his wife mixed up. The first one he divorced, the second one, was it the second one he beheaded? And which... <laughs> but you play golf, don't you, Sam? I can play, I don't play enough. Yeah, there's quite, lady golfing is quite a popular sport now, yeah, it's quite a popular really, part, it's taken quite seriously. Golfers, yeah, and the, and... Is she, uh, I've seen her, she's quite a sturdily built woman. No. <laughs> is it true they're all lesbians? No, they're women? not all lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> is it true they're all lesbians, women? <laughs> yeah. No, that's just what they tell you, mate. Oh, boy, yeah. <laughs> Do you oh, play well. golf? Occasionally, I have a little white brown. Yeah. What about golf? <laughs> Ernie Els. What a silly name. Was it? Else. The Eel. weather can. Weather conditions. Yeah, it was a weather conditions in conjunction with something else. <laughs> weather conditions and the grass was too long. <laughs> no. It was windy and it especially affected him because. Oh. Not he was too tall. tall. He was too tall. Three points. Thank he you too very tall. much. Yeah. Oh. Oh. In fact, Ernie Els had two excuses to call on. The winds were gusting and it doesn't help when you're six foot three. No. So it was too windy and he was too tall. <laughs> this year's Open was, of course, won by Ben Curtis, a 500 to one outsider. It's the longest shot in sport, apart from the one that beat David in the World Cup. <laughs> Colin Montgomery was going well at this year's Open until he had a big slice at the third, followed by a sticky bun and a scotch egg at the fourth. <laughs> And at the end of that round, <laughs> Phil's team have three points and David's team wow. have three points. Wow. <laughs> round two is our David Beckham challenge, so fingers on the buzzers. Uh, there's a point for every starter question you get right, and each one wins you some bonus questions. Okay, here we go. In a recent Posh and Beck's photo session, one of them bends submissively over a table, pouting and wearing only hot pants and a trilby hat. Him or her? <laughs> Who's that? I wish it would be him, but then it's the old twiglet, Posh. <laughs> you are absolutely correct. Wow. Wow. You do look like a maypole today. It's very nice. Yeah. I thought deck chair was more than Yeah, that. Oh, yeah. deck chair vibe or an ice cream salesman. Yeah. Or an overdressed punt. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I know anything about it. <laughs> What a strong position you were in there. <laughs> What's that? Bay City bondage. <laughs> <laughs> Any more from you, I won't give you a sugar lump. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here are your bonus questions. David Beckham got into trouble when he was photographed at the Dragon Eye nightclub in Hong Kong holding what? <laughs> holding a debate with Stephen Hawkins on the real nature of time. <laughs> it's not what I've got here. Chopstick? Uh, no. Turned out to be posh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know posh? I don't know. Oh, right. I just wondered if people who know her do call... Do you know no, Posh? No. Yeah. Do you call her Posh? No. All oh, right, what good. What do you call her? Really? Victoria. Really? Oh. Funny, that. Eh? I've met her once. She seemed quite nice when I met her. Really? I met her mum. Her mum's scary, though, isn't she? Yeah, I've met her. Her mum's scary? Her mum's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, David Beckham got into trouble. Holding what? Holding um, a... Holding a lady. Seance. Holding a beer. A seance? <laughs> Holding an accordion. Holding a beer, yes. Yeah, holding a Heineken, beer. well done. Yeah, what did former Heineken. atomic kitten Kerry Katona recommend David Beckham do with his wife? Fatten her up. 
Give her a good meal. Good roast. <laughs> oh. Here's a money saving tip for Victoria when you're next here. Tell her to save money instead of flying back and forth over to Spain, she could just fax herself. <laughs> Come on. He, she said he should soak her head in vinegar so she could win the World Conquer Championship. <laughs> no, no, dump her in favour of a northern girl. Oh. At the Beckham's reconciliation dinner at Madrid's swanky Hotel Ritz, what was scattered around the dining room as they ate? Prostitutes. <laughs> In case he got bored. Photographer? <laughs> <laughs> nope. What's romantic? Um... <laughs> I bet it was something like, uh, it was like, um, uh, flowers, Yeah, yeah, petals, orchids, well done. When the Beckhams arrived at Elton John's Russian themed party, what did Victoria say when she saw the Russian dancers in their Russian costumes? Is that Chelsea's new away <laughs> <laughs> No, she said, oh look, Spanish dancers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Another start question for you. What are the names of David's two dogs? Be careful. Yeah. Go on. I think I know this. Yeah, yeah. Puffy and Snoop. Is the correct answer. Well, okay. Very well. good. Obviously no idle moments in the, in the modelling game, eh, <laughs> <ain't laughs> Okay, at his first training session with Real Madrid, David Beckham was told off for not listening. What was he doing instead? Uh, was he listening to um, teach yourself English tapes or <laughs> English? <laughs> Spanish business. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Can you uh, sorry, it was something to do with um, his... What is it? It's tattoos. Yes, he was inspecting his tattoos. Who <laughs> got Victoria in Sanskrit, doesn't he? No, that, that's... Um... But it's spelt wrong, I think. <laughs> yeah, it actually means onion barge. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Beckham been replaced by in Germany's new Vodafone ads? Tinky Winky. Dipsy. Um... <laughs> Schumacher? Is it correct answer? Well yeah. done. How did David describe Nelson Mandela's aura? <laughs> <laughs> the great car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, amazing is the yeah. correct <laughs> Beckham was also amazed the first time he visited Japan, but how did he feel the second time? Amazed her. <laughs> he was amazed the first time, the second time he was flabbergasted. Great. No, you couldn't say. Great. Um, astonished. Brilliant. Astonished is the correct answer. Oh. He actually said uh, he was astonished. The yeah. third time, I just, I'm lost for words, is what he said. <laughs> Uh, Beckham's fame is subsiding in Japan, but he's fast being caught up by Michael Owen, or as Naomi Kashima, a 30-year-old Tokyo secretary, put it, I only really know two English footballers, Beckham and the one who lost the money gambling. <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, Phil's team have six points and David's team have eight. <laughs> the treble where three sports personalities are linked with three objects. David's team, your subject for the treble is sporting inspirations. Have a look at this trio. Age-defying tennis queen Martina Navratilova. Oh. Big hitting ex alfie redneck John Daly. And Arctic conquering, call this a cold snap, polar walker and Haddo. So they were all inspired by something, but David's team, which one was inspired by daffodils? Who was motivated by their former partners? And who was kept going by the thought of mangoes? Right, he's the guy that went to the North Pole, isn't he? Yeah, Dan Haddock. So maybe that's got something to do with the flowers, because it's all bleak and white and snowy and icy, and daffodils are kind of alive, aren't they? Yeah, no. I'm Have feeling it. it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. That's quite beautiful. <laughs> What's the deal here? These people in the photographs here don't look like any like the ones in the clip. The bloke we saw in the clip, you've got a picture of Pauline Quirk up yeah. there. <laughs> I do care about Martina and Daphne. That's not particularly um, over there. Um, her sort of flower. No, is it? no, it's too girly. Yeah, there's a flower called Old Man's Beard. <laughs> <laughs> Mangos. Martina. Martina. It's what, just, why do you say that? Because it's just. I don't know. That's what I would imagine. She's educated fruit and sugar. And well, it's just all kind of guessing. And all right? yeah, yeah, um, healthy. 
I think it's daily with the partners. No, I, think it because I know that he's had lots of and daffodils and on the ice. Daffodils. Pen had it, but... Is the correct answer for three <laughs> points? Well done. <laughs> 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 Four times married, John Daly claims he thinks of his ex-wives every time he wallops the golf ball. Pen Haddo was kept going on his polar walk by the thought of picking daffodils with his little boy, obviously before abandoning him for six months on another expedition. <laughs> uh, Martina Navratilova claims it was mangoes that inspired her comeback at the Australian Open this year. As she told the press conference, it's the mango season and they're my favourite fruit. <laughs> Pen Haddo went on to organise the first all-woman expedition to the North Pole. Their husbands kept track of them via satellite to enable them to organise regular airdrops of ironing. <laughs> <laughs> the emergency radio channel was in constant use with urgent messages such as, Darling, how do you open the dishwasher and what sort of cheese do we normally have? <laughs> Martina now talks openly about her lesbianism and recently said that she'd like to become a mother and no doubt she will, as soon as they bring out the Slazinger turkey baster. <laughs> Martina won 20 titles at Wimbledon, going right back to the 1970s. Imagine that, Henman. She was winning titles when you were still losing at swing ball to Big Ted. <laughs> and he only had one eye. And that was a button. OK, Phil's team, your subject for the treble is sporting hobbies. Take a look at this. Deep-pocketed Siberian, Roman Abramovich. Off on the B of Bang sprinter, Linford Christie. And excitable will-he-won't-he -he Celtic boss, Martin O'Neill. But Phil's team, who has his own gardening column? Which one collects antique razors? And who enjoys watching high-profile murder cases? Linford can't possibly be into gardening, can he? Imagine how careful he'd have to be with the strimmer. <laughs> it's an accident waiting to happen. Sportsman, you used to have a strange hobby, didn't you, Phil? You used to play cricket. I did. <laughs> Martin O'Neill is the, is the is Celtic bloke, isn't he? Celtic manager. Yeah. yeah. He'd be a good, that would be a good TV show. No one's someone this is a good idea I've come up with here. Everyone nowadays, it's a, everyone loves a cop who does something else, right? Amateur detectives. You've got Rosemary and Time, the gardeners who solve crimes, okay? Mm -hmm. How about a football manager who, as a part-time interest, solves murder cases and so on and so forth? And he could have any number of catchphrases like, It's only half time. <laughs> we need a survey before the full time whistle blow. I thought you said it's <laughs> <laughs> Before the full time whistle blow? <laughs> Call the series One Nil. Get it? No. Okay. <laughs> it, it, the system could be Beckham, and the catchphrase could be Wookum Beckham. <laughs> She's a murderer. <laughs> Celtic and wet. I'll still be before half time, so I will. She's nothing to be afraid of. She's just a serial killer. <laughs> I've taken that Ferguson before. <laughs> I can take him again. <laughs> Mr. Bruno, you've got a roommate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on. All right. Sorry. Okay, we had Catherine Murray on the show a couple of weeks ago. She told us Linford does like gardening, didn't she? Yeah. So we think that's got to be it, hasn't it? Yeah. Right. Gardening, Linford. Gardening. Um, Big time. Who's this old fellow with the long hair here? <laughs> He's the bloke who used to be on Crown Court. Yeah, you've seen him before, Phil, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Let's have O'Neill and the murderers. What, what's that bloke? Ro Roman Abramovich. Yes, yeah. Roman. I reckon he's the razor collector. It's correct for three points. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> yes, in fact, Chelsea's Roman Abramovich is an avid collector of antique razors and bayonets, although he's had to cut back recently as he's about to make his most expensive purchase yet a Chelsea season ticket. Linford <laughs> Christie is a keen gardener and had his own column in The Guardian. It's the most unlikely piece of journalism by a sportsman since Jonathan Edwards was the guest editor of Razzle. <laughs> and former law student Martin O'Neill is fascinated with notorious murder cases. That's why he's been linked with the Spurs job. Until this Saturday, they were getting murdered every week. <laughs> Roman Abramovich still faces a number of challenges at Chelsea, winning the Premiership, winning the Champions League, and the biggest challenge of all, making Ken Bates' death look like an accident. <laughs> One of the questions sent in to Linford Christie's gardening column came from a Mr. P. Tufnell of No Fixed Abode. <laughs> I won't go into the question, but Linford's answer was, for a larger crop, use a stronger light bulb. <laughs>
Martin O'Neill says that if he hadn't been a football manager, he'd have been a criminal lawyer. Well, these days, Martin, it pays to be both. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team have nine points, and David's team have 11. <laughs> it's time now for the blindfolds as we play Field the Sportsman. Now, our team captains have gallantly offered to make way for our guests this week, so Rory and Jody. If you'd like to make the way out the middle. Take your blindfold with you, Jodie, please. Always sensible when near Rory. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you look very smart, Rory. Thank you, Nick. Do you say to you? A bit of a teacher on school trip, don't you, you think? Don't you like <laughs> this is my, uh, my casual gear, actually. <laughs> okay, blindfold's on. Can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay, and your time starts now. Now, this could be one of your catwalk colleagues, um, <laughs> Jenny. Let's have a, always go. Where, where are you, Jenny? Jenny Hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just down here. Down. <laughs> oh my God! What was... <laughs> that That's very impressive. <laughs> Don't put your hands anywhere down here, uh, Jodie, just in case your boyfriend's watching. <laughs> Mark, that is impressive. <laughs> My God! What was that? Jeez, what's... It's a... Uh, it's holding a stick-like thing. It's <laughs> not very familiar. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, dear. What, do you, what do you think? I think I know. Who do you think it is? I am my boyfriend. <laughs> well done, Jodie. You've spotted your own boyfriend. Hey! Tarquin Southwell. <laughs> I can't help but think we're at a disadvantage here. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, she did spot him just by smelling him. <laughs> Okay, uh, Jonathan and Kirsty, if you'd like to take your positions. Come up, my lovely Kirsty. Oh. Yeah. I admire the fact you managed to get to that without saying you were feeling a little hoarse at any stage, right? <laughs> uh, can we have our second mystery guest, please? on David's cryogenic chamber again. <laughs> What's all this? Are we, in the, are we in the Blue Peter studio by mistake? Bondage gear. Is it? <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't got what I asked for finally. It's not Fern Britain and a Basque, is it? <laughs> Christmas has come early for one lucky boy. <laughs> is it Colin Montgomery? <laughs> With skis? No, hold on. What's going on down here? There's something over here. What is it? Is it a dinghy? Oh, can't be. <laughs> Kirsty, get down here. Get down here. I want to try something. Is it a boat? Or sure sledge? Dogs. Yeah. Is it Percy Sledge? <laughs> oh, what's it? Um, Pen Haddo. Oh, Pen Haddo is a great hey. answer. Well done. At the end of that round, Phil's team have 12 points and David's team have 14.
Right. Okay, we finish with the name game. The team in the lead goes first, which is David's team. Okay, as many names as you can in 90 seconds. Jody, can pass this. Rory, please. And your time starts now. Uh, he's a manager of, he's an old silverhead manager, he's the manager of England, you know, manager of the Magpies. Keegan, uh, yeah. Kevin Keegan. No, the manager of the Magpies. Who are the Magpies? <laughs> 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 Keegan's your <laughs> manager! <laughs> To be. Yeah, no, used to, to, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah. Ex, ex Blackburn manager, so Alex number two, same surname as you, Jody. Kid, Brian Kidd. Brian. Very good. Well, that's why you look at my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Get them out, baby. Let's forget baby. about it. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, race top horse trainer, a uh, surname sort of thing that Martina would smoke. Um Islamic snooker player. This is a three day event. Uh, second name is what you put in your mouth when funnel. you kill your funnel. <laughs> well remember. <remaining. laughs> <laughs> funnel, very good. This is an American golfer whose second name is the same as a Tiger famous Woods. hotel. The something Astoria. Where they made the famous something salad. Uh, Caesar. The <laughs> <laughs> vampire slayer. What's she called? Buffy. But Buffy. sounds a bit like that. His first name. Stuffy. Yeah, but a little more early on in the alphabet. Buffy. 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 Duffy. 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 The famous Duffy golfer. Caesar, I don't know. Duffy Caesar salad. I'll get there. <laughs> Yeah. Your manager's called Kevin Keegan. <laughs> eight will win it for you. Eight. 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 Oh, eight. 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 Hold on, hold on. Time eight. starts. Hold on. Now, brilliant football. Like, he's got an injury. We hope he gets better to play against Turkey. David, Michael Owen. Michael, Michael, Michael Owen, David. Uh, okay, it's uh, your dad. Bernard Gallagher. There you go. Bernard. All right. Um, this bloke, when the show started, he was the manager of Leeds. I don't know if he still is. Hey, you ready? Yeah, there you go. Um, oh, man. First name is, remember the Abba song? Can you see the stars? Fernando. Oh. That's it. And the second name is, a past tense of one is... Ren. And I've got to say, you stupid scout. Annie Ari. Twat. Uh, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> Ren, twat, Fernando. Fernando, one... Ran... Ranieri. No. Randy, What's yeah. another word for the Little. area there? That's your, and that's your... Chest. Area. That's your, um... Chest. Your chest. What's it? It sounds like that. Fernando. Tip, it's Wangit! All right. Oh, Ran. Okay. Um, this bloke plays for Celtic, I think. Uh, first name is like mine, but shorter. Bit common. John. John. Okay. Second name is. Yeah, well John. Well done you. Well, you know your stuff. Uh, this is what. If a common pirate made you leave the ship, he would make you walk. Plank. The plank. The plank. That's the why. Plank. The plank. And, um, John the plank. And um, oh my God. Uh, it's the same. A little dog. It's a little oh dog goodness. that's like this. It's a little dog. Uh, someone of the Antarctic. Spaniel. Capri. Someone of the Antarctic. <laughs> someone of the Antarctic. Um, little cock. Um, pe little pe pe pepe. Pepe of the Antarctic. <laughs> He's ever set bloody foot near the Antarctic. Um, the Spanish don't know no. cold places. Isn't it John for plank? No, it's Scott. Scott! Well oh. done. Correct. Oh. Yes. Okay. Oh. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. So I told him up 16, but this week's winner is David's team with 19. They think it's all over, but it is now. Football and drugs tests. The 10 o'clock news reports on the row over Rio Ferdinand. Next on BBC One. A new admirer for Natalie, and she's tempted. Comedy with the Crouches after that at 10.35. <laughs>